I'm going to start a new chapter on waves and vibrations. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about, you know, simple harmonic uh, motion. Uh, so in this chapter, these are the topics I'll be covering. So first, simple harmonic motion, in short, SHM. Uh, and then in simple harmonic motion, so you will be, you know, uh, we'll be discussing displacement, velocity, acceleration, energy of the harmonic oscillator. And so then, you know, we will be deriving some formulas for uh, some simple system like mass and spring oscillator, simple pendulum, and uh, briefly physical pendulum. And then uh, at the end of this lecture, uh, very briefly, I'll be explaining damp oscillator and force uh, oscillations and resonance. So, what is simple harmonic motion? So, any simple periodic to and fro motion is simple harmonic. It's an oscillatory motion, and things to know about simple harmonic motion is the you need to know what is time period, frequency, amplitude, phase, energy, and simple harmonic motion can be represented by a mathematical equations. So why do we study a simple harmonic motion? So it's a very important concept, you know, in physical world. You know, the atomic molecular vibrations in crystal lattice are simple harmonic. You can model them as a simple harmonic motion. Sound propagates in air in any material medium due to the vibration of the particles of the medium uh, which are which can be modeled as simple harmonic motion you know. So without simple harmonic motion uh, you know uh, of the particles of the air molecules uh, you can't even propagate your sound energy from one place to another. So and light energy, light waves are also electro electromagnetic oscillations which can be modeled by using simple harmonic motion. So what is the condition requirement for simple harmonic motion? So here's the you know, most important point. So uh, should have restoring force. If an, if an object or particle is, uh, you know, uh, acted upon by a force called restoring force, uh, that particle will execute, you know, simple harmonic motion. That restoring force could be, you know, spring force, could be the gravity component, could be electrostatic force, right? So restoring force means which is uh, some some force which is proportional to the displacement but always towards the origin okay of this type so restoring force should have this type so force should be proportional to the displacement x with some constant but it, it must have some negative sign negative sign means force and displacement are opposite phase right uh, <clears throat> because force is always directed towards the equilibrium position the mean position so let me show you some examples so here's an example of a mass and spring oscillator uh, on an air table, you know, with frictionless air table, uh, you can see this is the equilibrium position where the, the spring is relaxed, right? It's not compressed, it's not um, uh, expand. Uh, I mean, so this is called equilibrium position where the net force is zero. Now, if you uh, just move this glider uh, slightly, pull this glider slightly, and release it, it, it will undergo a simple harmonic motion oscillation. It will undergo oscillations, right? And if you plot the force, restoring force versus displacement, you can show easily show it in, in our lab using technology, you know, uh, by collecting the data for a mass and spring. Uh, you will clearly see the force and displacement uh, are linearly related but has negative slope. They are proportional to each other, but they are opposite in direction. So, uh, so that's the main point. So restoring force is responsible for this oscillation. So let me show you another example. So this marble in this ball, right? Uh, this is the equilibrium position, right? Where net force is zero. But if you push this uh, marble slightly from its equilibrium position, and if you release it, the force of gravity component, right, will, will try to bring it uh, down to the equilibrium position, right? This is this restoring force now. The gravity, the component of gravity works as a restoring force in this example. But because of, once you pull it down towards the, equilibrium position but because of inertia it keeps going actually on the other end and where the force of gravity component again flips right and then it will again try to bring to the equilibrium and this process will continue again and again and as a result you have uh, oscillatory motion you know and you can um, you know show it in a graph so if you just plot the position of this marble as a function of time it will be like a wave like you know shape so you can clearly see this is the graphical representation of uh, oscillatory motion 
any simple harmonic oscillation. So here things to note, so amplitude, right? these are some characteristic properties of periodic motion, simple harmonic motion. So what is amplitude? Amplitude is the maximum magnitude, maximum displacement from the equilibrium. So what is amplitude? So this is amplitude, okay, this, this peak from the equilibrium, this uh, equilibrium line, or this, or this, right? That's the amplitude. What is period? Period is the time for one complete cycle. So how do you find the period? So this this is the period, peak to peak distance or trough to trough. This is called period. And what is frequency? Frequency is the number of um, oscillations you know made per cycle, per unit time. So which is just the inverse of uh, they are reciprocal actually to each other. So frequency is one over uh, the square, one over the period. What is angular frequency? Angular frequency is just uh, you know omega is two pi the linear frequency. So here's an uh, so here's the equation you can use to you know represent the simple harmonic oscillation. So because say let's say you have this mass oscillating simple harmonically and its position is changing like this, which is uh, this sinusoidal curve. This sinusoidal curve can be represented by a sine or co cosine curve. So we're we're going to use cos this equation. So this x as a function of time is some amplitude cos omega t plus this extra phi angle is called initial phase because it could start from any point right it should not uh, it uh, it should not necessarily start from the amplitude maximum or from zero so that's why it has some initial phase starting point <clears throat> so that's why you have some phase angle so this is the standard mathematical equation to represent a simple harmonic oscillation and <clears throat> Let's see. So once you have x position as a function of time, you can find the velocity of the uh, mass, you know, executing you know, simple harmonic oscillation. So how do you find the velocity? Velocity is just the time derivative of this. So you will get negative omega a sine omega t plus phi, right? And you can call this as the velocity amplitude. This uh, omega a is the maximum velocity. Let's call it v naught, right? This is the velocity amplitude, maximum speed. And acceleration, so do one more time, derivative, derivative one more time with respect to time, so you get the acceleration, right? So one more time, so then you get negative omega square a cos, but what is a cos omega t plus phi? Which, this is just the x as a function of time. So finally, acceleration is negative omega square x as a function of time. This is the main hallmark of hallmark equation for any simple harmonic motion, which is basically a... <coughs> which is uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, um, this is uh, just a second order differential equation because acceleration is the second derivative of x with respect to time. And this is a second order differential equation, right? And we know from our standard uh, differential equation solution, this has an oscillatory solution. So we, we can mathematically prove that this motion is oscillatory. And this is a quick revisit. So here's um, the position, velocity, and acceleration functions as a function of time. And if you plot them, it will be something like that, you know. Uh, so here, uh, the position and velocity has some phase difference, right? You can calculate, and acceleration is this. Finally, if you plot this, right, function here, and you can clearly see the position and uh, this. Let's compare this figure number A and figure number C. So position as a function of time, and acceleration as a function of time has uh, 180 degree phase difference. That means they are out of phase. You can clearly see. Because when position gets maximum, right, acceleration, uh, which is proportional to force, gets minimum, right, uh, something like that. You can clearly see, right, they are out of phase by 180 degree. So here's the position again. Um, so here, the acceleration in this simple harmonic motion is maximum at extreme ends. So when the this particle gets here or to the other end, it, it has the maximum acceleration, right? And velocity is zero. At extreme ends, uh, the velocity is zero, right? Because it has to stop momentarily. So velocity is maximum at the equilibrium position. So when it gets here at equilibrium position, right? So velocity gets maximum and um, acceleration is zero at that. So, uh, if you are given the graph of simple harmonic motion, how do you find this 
parameters. So how do you find the time period? So time period is, is, is just the peak to peak distance between uh, peak to peak time difference, you know, or trough to trough is the period. And frequency is just the inverse of once you find the time period, so frequency is just the inverse of the uh, time period. So how do you find the amplitude? Amplitude is just this, which is the maximum displacement, this or that. It's always a positive point of view. <clears throat> and how do you find the uh, phase, the initial phase? Because remember, it uh, it um, may not actually start from maximum or zero position, right? It, it could start from here, right? So it has, it may have uh, some initial phase angle, or phase difference. So how do you find that? So starting from this position function, uh, you have to put t is equal to zero. You have to find what's the what's his displacement at t zero, right? And just uh, by putting t zero right in this function, this this will be gone. Omega t will be gone, so this will be reduced to that. And the phase initial phase difference is inverse cos, uh, the in, inverse cos the displacement at time zero divided by the amplitude. So that's how we find the phase difference in, when we do our numerical problems. So next. These are the main differential equations you will have to, you know, deal with actually. Uh, not necessarily in the exam, you know, or but um, uh, so since most of you are engineers, right? In physics and engineering at this level, um, you know, uh, and the next few years you might have to deal with uh, this differential equation. But here, uh, since we are studying the oscillatory system, uh, you just need for this chapter, you just need this second order differential equation, which has an oscillatory solution, right? Uh, you just need to know this. And, uh, but in the presence of some damping force or frictional force, it will take this shape. The differential equation will have uh, three different possible solutions. And the last one is actually a decay, you know, damping solution. So now let's <clears throat> uh, get into the main problem. So you have a mass and spring oscillator. So how do you find uh, the time period? Uh, so I'm gonna show you a separate derivation for in the next phase. So here's an example of mass and spring oscillator. Uh, so this block of mass M is, uh, you know, attached to the spring and it's, um, you know, oscillating on a frictionless, you know, table, frictionless floor. So, so let's say this is the equilibrium position where the net force is zero. So you then just pull it, you know, uh, before you release, you uh, just pull it by some distance x. And then if you release it, and then it undergoes, you know, a simple harmonic oscillation. So our job is to find out uh, the period, the time period of these oscillations. So let's get started. So we just get started with Newton's laws. So what's the spring force? <clears throat> spring force, right, acting on this block is negative kx. But force is, from Newton's second law, force is also mass times acceleration, right? Uh, so, and mass acceleration is the second derivative of the position, you know, displacement. Um, as a function of time, right, second derivative of uh, the uh, rate of change of, you know, second derivative of the position as a fu function of time uh, is acceleration in terms of calculus, right, and then uh, you just uh, try to set, it, set this up uh, uh, in a standard differential equation. So it's a second order differential equation, as you can see. So first divide both sides by mass and then bring this side here this is a second order differential equation right and you can compare this is a standard second order differential equation and it has uh, this has we definitely know that it has its solution is oscillatory so it's it has uh, an oscillatory solutions of this type so the position of the mass oscillating mass will change something like that cos omega t plus k2 sine omega t so that's the general uh, solution for this differential equation right so we know that this becomes a simple harmonic uh, oscillatory motion 
from we can prove it from this differential equation so but our job was to find the period the time period so here if you just compare here these two equations right so omega square is k over m where k is the spring constant so omega is uh, you know k over m square root so then time period is just 2 pi over omega from our definition of time period right <clears throat> 2 pi over omega is the time period which is the time for one complete oscillation and then finally this is the formula so it gets reverse so m over k square root right so that's the formula standard formula for a time period for a mass and spin oscillator which also works for a vertical oscillator vertical mass and spin oscillator so you can clearly say that time period is proportional to the square root of the mass for the given uh, spring constant and if you keep the mass constant time period is inversely proportional to the square root of uh, the you know uh, spring constants so here's uh, some relations so from uh, the mass and spring oscillator right uh, um, this is the formula for the time period for a mass and spring spring oscillator you can clearly see the period for a mass and spring oscillator is proportional to the square root of the mass and inversely proportional to the square root of the uh, spring constant that's what it says so increasing m right and keeping the amplitude and spring constant same right you can clearly see the period will increase with mass and increasing k right if you increase the spring constant use different spring, uh, different springs with different spring constant but keeping the amplitude and mass constant will decrease the period uh, or that will increase the frequency and in, so you just change the amplitude but keeping the spring and the mass constant it will not change the period it will not change the frequency right uh, amplitude has no effect in the frequency or uh, period that's what we and you can directly prove it in lab actually uh, of this formula so next is the energy of the simple harmonic motion right so if a mass and spring is oscillating clearly it has some total mechanical energy so and the next page i'm going to show you that derivation next we're going to find the total mechanical energy of oscillator so again we're going to take an example of mass and spring oscillator so let's derive the formula for total mechanical energy for uh, mass and spring a simple harmonic oscillator so again uh, let me draw the same thing you know you have a mass attached to the spring of spring constant k on a frictionless table and you can oscillate it right by just pulling it by some distance x and from the equilibrium position uh, and if you release it it will go uh, simple harmonic oscillations so what would be the um, what would be the total energy of this mass right uh, so that's what we're gonna derive so again remember the position of the mass in simple harmonic oscillation changes as this a cos omega t and some phase angle initial phase angle right that's the, that's how we represent a simple harmonic motion position position of a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion uh, we're gonna need that and what will be the velocity so velocity is just dx over dt right so this from here the derivative of cos is uh, negative sine so negative a uh, but here's the coefficient is omega sine omega t that's the velo that's how velocity changes so they just have some phase difference the position and velocity which we are gonna need so what will be the total mechanical energy right the total mechanical energy of this oscillation uh, is just u plus k u is the potential energy so in this case this just the spring potential energy right because the gravitational potential energy just zeroes out because it's on the floor and uh, k is the kinetic energy so the spring potential energy is one half k x is right k is the spring constant x is the elongation or compression which is this right plus one half k uh, I'm sorry, 1 half mv square is the kinetic energy. So now let's put all the values of values of x and v and simplify. So x is this. So uh, you have a square. So cos square 
omega t plus phi plus second term one half mass velocity is this so squaring it will a square omega square sine square omega t plus phi so that's the now our job is just to simplify it and remember for mass and spring uh, there's one more uh, you know relation we're gonna need omega square is k over m from mass and spring from previous derivation so we might need that actually so omega square is k over m so then k is m omega square so we're, we're gonna need that somewhere here so one half uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna change uh, m omega square okay so k a square cos square omega t plus phi plus in the second term we can do this and uh, here you have m omega square right the product m omega square is just the spin constant k so k a square right sine square omega t plus phi okay so remember i just use this and one half k a square is common factor so you have cos square omega t plus phi plus sine square omega t plus phi right and from trigonometric relation what would be cos square theta plus sine square theta so that should give you one right if you see the trigonometric relation that should give you this one so that's the total energy so uh, as you can clearly see right the total mechanical energy for oscillating mass and spring system is constant basically is constant because k is constant which is spring constant for the given uh, <coughs> spring right is constant and this is the amplitude a is the amplitude right which is also constant if so we are assuming there is no frictional force right so amplitude also remains constant so the total energy remains constant so potential and kinetic energy uh, will changes back and forth right but the total mechanical energy of the system remains constant and that's you can also say the total mechanical energy remains conserved so here's again the recap you know revision so the total energy of the system is constant if there's no damping force or if there's no uh, you know uh, if there's no uh, frictional force the total mechanical energy remain, should remain constant that's uh, that's called you know the uh, conservation of uh, mechanical energy as you can see so the during this oscillation as you can see right the potential and kinetic uh, potential and kinetic energy will change back and forth right during this period but the total mechanical energy remains constant so now instead of horizontal what happened if you do vertical uh, mass and spring system so basically you can prove that it doesn't change anything the formula will be formula will be exactly same and the motion still motion still will be simple harmonic motion so what it changes just the equilibrium position so now uh, this is no longer uh, an equilibrium position so when you add a mass vertically like that right it will displace by delta l say and here's the net force is zero at this equilibrium position because net force uh, right the force the spring force which is pulling it up is f times k times delta l it will be balanced by mg and this is the new equilibrium position the system will oscillate about this point right this is the new equilibrium and at any during the oscillation at any point this is the net force right uh, the, this force this minus that is the net force and then if you do this calculation in, on this line if you just carefully watch this net force is still negative kx which is again a second order differential equation and it's still this is still a simple harmonic oscillation it's, it, it will just change the equilibrium position that's it the formula will be exactly the same right and here's some example of the applet animation so here's a couple of examples of applets next uh, i'll be showing you uh, calculations of time period for a simple pendulum but before that before we derive the simple pendulum 
uh, you know, you need to know a couple of things. So here's the Taylor series uh, expansion uh, of trigonometric, uh, trigonometric uh, functions. Cos and sin theta can be expanded like this. It's called Taylor series expansion. And what happened here, if uh, angle theta is small, angle theta in radians, right? If angle theta is small, say, right? All these higher powers, right, will be gone, will be negligible, very, very small. So sin theta can be just replaced by this theta when theta is in radians, right? If sine theta, if theta is small, sine theta is just, can be just replaced by theta. Uh, you know, this is called small angle approximation, which is very helpful actually uh, in deriving, you know, many formulas in simple hammering motion, in like uh, finding the time period for a uh, simple pendulum, which you will see next uh, slide. So here's an example, five degrees converted to radians. And if you take the sine of theta in radians, it will be almost same, right? 10 degrees, this, right, um, same, right, sine theta and theta are same, and 15 degrees, you have 1% person, one person devi deviation, uh, 20 uh, degrees, you, uh, you have 2% deviation, right, so conclusion, in, if you keep the angle theta uh, less than 0 degree, right, in oscillation, uh, so uh, you can uh, use this approximation, sine theta is uh, exactly equal to theta. So here's the simple uh, pendulum, which uh, I will uh, you know, derive separately next page. So next, let's derive the time period formula for a simple pendulum. So simple pendulum is just a mass above, you know, mass M attached to a light string and it's pivoted at the ceiling, something like that. And this is the equilibrium position, remember, where net force is zero. And if you post this by some angle, small angle theta, and release it, so it will undergo simple harmonic motion, you know. And we can find the time period formula for that. So let's see, let's see that the string has length m, and it has a mass m. So at this position, right, what's the free body diagram? So when it is displaced by some angle theta, so this is the force of gravity and but force of gravity now has two components one is uh, along the string which if this is theta this is also theta and the other one is this so from trigonometry so if this is mg with the theta it becomes mg cos theta and the other component which is towards the equilibrium position mean position is mg sine theta as you can see here the restoring force is mg sin theta so mg sin theta is responsible for actually oscillation here because it, it creates the torque on this mass and which creates the oscillation okay so let's derive that so at this position at any position theta right what's the torque uh, on this so the net torque on Mm, this mass at this position is so uh, our by our definition the definition of torque is uh, rf you know uh, sin theta right rf sin theta is the definition of torque the magnitude right and uh, so uh, so r is your l because this is your this is your position vector right this is your position vector magnitude and this is your force right so it's making some angle theta right so and also you also need to put some negative sign here because this torque and this angular displacement are always opposite in this oscillating system you must put a negative sign here because the torque and the angular displacement you know it produces are always opposite just like force and displacement are opposite so negative r is your l um, and f is mass times gravity uh, sine theta right that's the magnitude of the torque okay negative sum simply shows that uh, torque and uh, this angular displacement are opposite to each other and one more approximation uh, if theta is small say less than 10 degree right and uh, we have already talked about this in uh, in our lecture then we can do some approximation sin theta will be almost equal to theta right our approximation small angle this is called small angle approximation so then torque is minus l mg just theta but torque from Newton's second law in rotational dynamics rotational portion torque is just i times alpha 
okay talk is just i times alpha from our previous chart uh, where i is the moment of inertia right and alpha is the angular acceleration of this mass right so then alpha is negative l m g over moment of inertia and times theta and what is this alpha alpha is the angular acceleration which is the second derivative of theta with respect to time right mm, and then you can uh, then again make a differential equation so this is again similar to you know d square x over dt squared in linear translational motion right the differential equation uh, our standard differential equation this is similar to this right um, and that means and it has an oscillatory solution so we can prove that actually this motion will be oscillatory right oscillatory and its solution because uh, because you have a second order differential equation right of this type which has a so which is solution we definitely know its solution is oscillatory so what would be the uh, frequency the angular frequency so if you just compare uh, omega right square is l m g over i right and then omega is l m g over i square root and time period is 2 pi over omega just like we did in mass and spring system so 2 pi uh, this will be flipped i over l m g square root and so this moment of inertia for a mass right so this is the bob uh, mass m connected uh, at distance this is the pivot point and for a point mass you know we know from a moment of inertia topic for a point mass uh, rotating right like this has moment of inertia of m m r square but here m l square right because r is l so that's what we're going to put here 2 pi i is just m l square and l m g square root right and l will cancel or mass will cancel so finally we end up with a very simple formula so the the period of a simple pendulum just depends on the length not on the mass and think about that why it's also part of your lab right okay so you can clearly see the period of the pendulum just depends on the length it's proportional to the square root of the length okay next i'm going to very briefly go through this any simple harmonic oscillation motion you know can be uh, you know compared with circular motion circular motion uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motions are similar because if you see right here uh, so let's say the particle at position p prime right is, is 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 rotating in a circular path with uniform circular motion say and the projection let's see the projection uh, of this particle onto this x-axis right as the particle moves in a circular path this the projection of that point onto the horizontal axis x moves back and forth right like this right so that's why uh, any you know simple harmonic motion uh, can be actually represented by uh, a circular motion circular motion is you know uh, similar to you know this um, simple harmonic motion and you can use uh, the formulas from circular motion <clears throat> so here the position this is the position of the simple harmonic motion and this is the velocity and then just by playing with these two equations multiply one by omega and squaring and then you can you will end up with this velocity formula this is the velocity of the particle in simple harmonic motion uh, oscillation at any any at any position right and you can clearly see right this is not the general formula that you will be given you, you, you can if you can memorize that's great but this will not be given so here you can clearly check at x is equal to zero which is the equilibrium position right velocity will be maximum right because if you put x is zero here uh, velocity will be omega times a which is the maximum velocity and what happens when the particle reaches the extreme point left end or right end so at uh, extreme end uh, the position x will be a amplitude right and then this will be zero the velocity will be minimum or zero so you can clearly see from this is a very useful formula so next uh, any um, actually you can make any um, uh, physical objects as a pendulum you know it's called physical pendulum so let's say uh, any object uh, any object uh, you know of any shape 
so you just need to choose any pivot point so let's say this object is pivoted here the main formula for time period is just time period for any physical pendulum is 2 pi uh, moment of inertia divided by mass times gravity times d so what is d d is the distance between pivot point and the center of mass so that's all you need to know okay here's the physical pendulum uh, derivation you know so we're going to derive the uh, time period for a physical pendulum so as you know any you know object can work as a physical pendulum any object uh, not necessarily you know cylindrical or uh, you know uh, a ruler or something like that any shape uh, like this can work as a physical pendulum so uh, suppose uh, you choose a pivot point this is the pivot point right and this is the center of mass let's say and the distance between the pivot point and the center of mass is let's say d and the whole force of gravity act at the center of mass that's what we call center of mass and it's making an angle theta which is same as this angle right uh, and let's go with this so so we will have to start with the torque uh, so if you have uh, an object irregular shape uh, any physical pendulum like that you first choose the pivot point and then you displace it with some small angle theta right and if you release it it, it can undergo uh, simple harmonic oscillations and we can prove it and we can find the time period and frequency so if you displace it by angle theta what, what will be the torque acting on this right now because uh, the gen general de definition of torque is r cross f right it's the vector product cross product between the position vector r and the force uh, but its magnitude right its magnitude will be r f sine theta where theta is the angle between uh, you know r and f and r here is d right uh, so r is the distance of uh, this force from the pivot point which is d and force is the force of gravity mg and sine theta right that's the magnitude of the torque right and <clears throat> you also need to put the negative sign here because that simply means the torque and this angular displacement here theta are in opposite direction which is the hallmark of any simple harmonic motion you know just like we did in simple harmonic <coughs> simple pendulum or something uh, okay so for a small angle again we're gonna do we're gonna derive the um, period formula for a small angle because uh, if we consider a small angle then uh, you can uh, significantly simplify the problem for a small angle approximation as we did before uh, sine theta uh, can be you know replaced by theta right for a small angle so torque magnitude is negative d m g theta but what is torque the torque is i times alpha alpha is the angular uh, acceleration okay is from your rotational dynamics if you remember okay uh, so one more thing alpha is the second derivative of the angular displacement right theta with respect to time okay dt square theta by dt square it's the second derivative yeah right and then you just set up the differential equation in second order differential equation so dmg i divide both side by i uh, and then theta is equal to zero right and if you look at this this compare if you compare with our standard second order differential differential equation of this type right you have some something like that and it has an oscillatory solution right uh, so that means it will oscillate simple harmonically so it has and <clears throat> this second order differential equation of this type has an uh, oscillatory solution because differential equation has solutions uh, and uh, right it's a, a cos uh, cos theta and sine theta solutions now uh, whose angular frequency right so is given by uh, d m g over i in our physical pendulum case right and omega is d m g over i square root right but omega is 2 pi over t because we like to calculate the time period for the given physical pendulum so time period uh, for the given physical pendulum is then uh, 2 pi uh, 
i divided by uh, m g d square root so this is the general formula okay this is the general formula for the time period um, <clears throat> uh, for any physical pendulum so remember here don't get wrong, i is the moment of inertia okay it's called moment of inertia moment of inertia about the pivot point okay so because moment of inertia will be different uh, for different pivot point so make sure you calculate moment of inertia about the um, pivot point m is the total mass of the physical pendulum g is the gravity and d is the distance between you know uh, the pivot point and the center mass so that's all you need so this is the and then once you find the time period the frequency of oscillation will be just the inverse of the t that's it so now next couple of slides i'm gonna briefly explain uh, so uh, so next is damp simple hammering motion so damp means in reality all the oscillations are damp oscillation actually because there's a air friction there's damp any so none of the systems are perfect so eventually uh, you know the oscillations die out you know oscillations die out eventually to zero the mechanical energy right uh, decreases slowly which will be eventually converted to uh, converted to you know the thermal energy and this can be modeled by this differential equation so right you see here um, this now uh, in, instead of just this spring constant uh, kx you have some damping force negative bv is the damping force actually is the, due to the air friction uh, right which depends on the velocity this is the model wave so you have now two types of forces and then if you set up a differential equation uh, you will end up with this type of differential equation and it has a solution something like this if you solve this differential equation it will have an exponential decay uh, solution like this and you can clearly see the oscillations the amplitude die out exponentially with time you just need to know this qualitatively you know uh, and this is what will happen right so this third one this blue curve shows that's how the oscillations die out over time and finally uh, force oscillation and resonance so uh, let's again consider a uh, mass and spring oscillation uh, so it's oscillating now what happened if you uh, move the whole system this whole system right uh, also harmonically you know if you move it now it turns out that when uh, the frequency of the system you know uh, oscillation matches the fr natural frequency of the mass and spring oscillation you have you, uh, it gets a maximum vibration okay it will have a maximum oscillation so that condition is called resonance okay uh, so again let me um, tell you uh, so if the frequency of uh, this you know oscillation the whole system oscillation matches the frequency natural frequency of uh, the mass and spin oscillation uh, the, this system will have maximum oscillation so uh, this is called resonance curve and there is resonance in every every everyday life there are many examples of resonance you know in mechanical system in everyday life so here's some example you can actually break the glass of wine you know by just by um, just by emitting sound of certain frequency if the frequency of the sound matches uh, the natural frequency of the glass oscillation uh, it, it absorbs maximum energy right the glass absorbs maximum energy and it, it, you can break it you, you will see this video in many uh, so here uh, this is the famous uh, Tacoma bridge collapse actually uh, so what happens is this natural frequency matches the frequency created by the wind force you know or something and it, it absorbs it, it goes under it undergoes resonance and eventually the bridge collapse and these are more examples of resonance right uh, and more examples of resonance and next uh, I'll, so next video i'll be doing some sample problems some sim simple harmonic motion